Hello everyone, my name is Danny. I am someone who was born into a Jehovah's Witness, a JW uh, household, and I left when I was 15. I say left in the sense I never got baptized. The family dynamic we had, especially with the way my dad was at the time, was brutal. And so it was one of those things where you were almost horrified of what might happen if you stood up to him and said, Hey, I don't believe in any of this shit. I'm out. But to everyone's surprise, he actually just didn't care, which was the opposite of what everyone would have expected from him. He, we figured he'd come unglued. Most of my family is still J-dubs, unfortunately. It is technically a cult that's pretending to be a religion, contrary to popular belief of, well, J-Ws. <laughs> but today I wanted to actually sit down and make a video actually addressing a lot of the stuff that's been going on recently within the Jehovah's Witnesses because it's been a wild ride. It's It's been wild. Uh, especially considering not just the lawsuits that are at the national levels and in multiple different countries, whether it was the Australian Royal Commission or Norway or insert a billion one other places, the Jehovah's Witnesses via their governing body, which is like their their corporate entity, basically. So the Watchtower and Tract Society, as they like to refer to themselves as. They uh, have been getting taken to court like a motherfucker lately. <laughs> and using their own actually testimonies against them, proving that they pathologically lie, they contradict their own doctrines and their own uh, media that they output to their website, since they're so almost televangelistic now, because a lot of these lawsuits, the majority of them, have been either about child CSA, or child essays, trafficking, protecting pedophiles, and of course also more recently it's been the shunning aspects as well, which is a form of general child abuse, obviously, not just discrimination and abuse against other people. Those are the main reasons why they keep getting taken to court. And so theirs are the ones they've been losing a lot of. But in response to a lot of these, of course, the Jehovah's Witnesses have been scrambling desperately to stop hemorrhaging membership. They're around 8 million members that they currently have worldwide. Again, uh, membership in Jehovah's Witnesses is only calculated officially as those that are baptized. So they're just desperately trying to find something to be able to, uh, actually, as they would say, remain or return to relevancy. Remain relevant or return to it. Uh, which says a lot, <laughs> including the corporate, uh, the real corporate function of JW Cult Church. They even hired, during these court cases, uh, specifically the one here in Norway that they recently absolutely got themselves raffle stomped from, <laughs> losing miserably in every department, hired a corporate crisis management firm, effectively, is what it is, to help them quite literally, in words, retain or return to relevancy. <laughs> They're literally trying to market themselves and rebrand themselves so that they actually will hopefully gain back a lot of what they've lost. They really are functioning corporately at this moment. Besides the fact that they're using almost all the donations in reality for their own real estate investments, their own televangelism branches for funding big is their own big giant studio to produce their own films literally um and obviously to help fund their lawsuits and their defense and these lawsuits and to cover their tracks ironically jehovah's witnesses aren't even supposed to be a religious group they actually were just a bible study group or bible students that's what they called themselves actually before russell went ill and then ended up dying and then rutherford went and hijacked his will and thus the group and turned it into a religious group then enriching himself with riches of like expensive cars at the time along with mansions and other luxuries like that from the donations <laughs> who would have thought they lost so badly that jehovah's witnesses no longer have any kind of a a tax write-off that they can have in Norway. They don't get any of the funding that nonprofit charitable organizations, in this case of, relig of religious groups, 
get, they can no longer and will no longer be receiving any of those things, nor any of those exemptions, funds or exemptions. They, they can't do it. It's now illegal because they are no longer, they lost their license to be considered that basically in Norway. And so as a result, and that was entirely because of the shunning, especially shunning of children and family members like that, that are underage, uh, and the psychological and emotional manipulation and damage that that causes people. Uh, it's fucking hilarious, especially considering how they desperately attempted to beat around the bush and indirectly demand that, no, we don't shun people like that. We don't, we certainly don't recommend or encourage or enforce this in our doctrine to have parents isolate and punish their children with shunning because how dare they, how dare they not do this and not believe what we say and toe the line. And then they literally use their own words and their own doctrine and their own pieces of scripture against them to prove that's a lie, including clips straight from JW.org, which is especially hilarious. They're there reading. They have their media members, their faces for the governing body there that read off all these scripts, all these scriptures, all these other different things and give you their doctrine and their little spiels. All of that said, the origination of this was actually, again, from the the, the infamous, well-known fact that Jehovah's Witnesses tend to always protect and cover up for pedophiles and child molesters and all these other different things like that, including traffickers. They do this. And as a result, they've even been caught many a times, including here in Oregon, they've been caught multiple times literally burning or otherwise trying to get rid of their physical written records of these reports of these write-ups of these these people and of their their own records they're trying to get rid of them before police can get their hands on them they show up so that they can have an incomplete record if not no records left so that they can protect them that much more so as a result this is where this really began including with the Australian Royal Commission in England and so on. All these different nations have these lawsuits. This is where it started with the Jehovah's Witnesses getting taken to court like this. Is because of these issues. Recently, the Supreme Court of Louisiana, because of course there was a huge bunch of lawsuits, not just against the Catholic Church, struck down the whole child sex abuse case, the CSA case. Saying that it was uh, unconstitutional to let victims of child sexual abuse sue their abusers. So, in other words, you it, pretty much in the moment that this happens, you have to act and sue. Or else, you will be considered to be doing something unconstitutional and they will throw out your case. Which is so wrong on so many levels, especially as a child. And as a minor, that's insane. The Louisiana Supreme Court made a major ruling today, finding it was unconstitutional to let victims of child sexual abuse sue their abusers decades later. Catherine Robb of Child USA helped convince the Louisiana legislature to pass a look back window in 2021 unanimously. It let victims of child sexual abuse sue their abusers and other responsible parties for damage caused decades ago. Today, four of seven Supreme Court justices said the laws violated the due process rights of the accused to never be sued once the old deadlines had passed. They prefer to basically find that there's a vested right in sexual predators over the right to protect our children. 24 states in the District of Columbia found these laws were constitutional. Only Utah and now Louisiana disagree. While the look-back window applied to all victims of child molestation, hundreds of them filed claims against the Archdiocese of New Orleans. Today's ruling is likely to help the church settle about 500 claims through its bankruptcy case for pennies on the dollar. Yeah, Archdiocese, Roman Catholic Church, go figure. What else is fucking new? But Louisiana and U Utah are colored in with that, which is really puzzling to me because, okay, but you said that they also disagreed with it and said that it's unconstitutional. Which actually, I think about Utah is a little on the nose. <laughs> hmm, I can't imagine what, what in Utah might have had such powerful money and influence over the decision to decide that it was unconstitutional. I can't, I can't think of the name, uh... 
Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, I think there is, I don't know, some historical figure, I think, uh, wanted to create a Zion for his religious group. Something like that. So that's what I don't understand. Does that mean that they're going to flip to do the whole gray check, uh, gray checkered states now? And there's going to be 22 instead? Like that. I want to know that for sure. I want the clarity on that because I'm not sure how this works because this is clearly 24 states, these yellowed in ones, which says with revival window. But now if the Supreme Court of both Utah and Louisiana struck them down by saying that it was unconstitutional, that means that they should be turned into the grays and then we'll have 22 instead. The fact that it's not even half is says a lot. It's really royally fucked up that this is not universal Especially at a federal level, let alone universal in general. But then again, this kind of stuff is so protected and it's so endemic, unfortunately, into the high ranking and high society figures and groups of this country that it doesn't surprise me that the United States would still just ignore it. I mean, a lot of the politicians and government all the way up through the feds is 100% associated with a lot of these csa relating groups whether they're trafficking or otherwise they know that they just try to keep it as black listed and quiet as possible because well they're involved same with like border patrol and the national guard apparently especially when responding to disasters and then even um obviously hollywood is a famous one so it doesn't really surprise me in the slightest that that's a thing. And then, of course, churches have so much money, especially the big ones like the Catholics, that and, and influence, that it's not surprising at all if you think about those dynamics tied together that this country would want to more protect the interest of those people, including if they're royally wrong, like CSA-related stuff. But it's so wrong that this isn't like a universal thing. No matter what the case is. So, yes. So it's good... If this means that, in fact, here in Oregon, it's the same thing, that you can, that they do uphold this, they aren't trying to say it's unconstitutional, and that you can go back decades later and sue your abuser. That, that's huge, because the amount of mental and emotional and even social trauma that that puts on somebody, especially as a kid, are you kidding? And how long that's going to take, and then the stress of just being in the court case, and knowing that it may end up public that's disturbing and that's traumatizing in itself so it's going to take people literal decades to get to a point where they'd be in a place that they feel like they're ready to come out with this and actually go and sue and so that's why it's so necessary to be able to do stuff like this but that's how it started now of course again as i had aforementioned the jehovah's witnesses the other aspect of it is the shunning stuff and that's really seemingly even more of a focus now than before in these national level uh, cases where they're being sued and absolutely losing their, their defense cases against the suing. Uh, one of those desperate changes they've made since is also allowing women to now wear pants. Because <laughs> they always refuse to allow women to wear pants. You had to wear a skirt or a dress. You could not wear literally anything else. It was considered indecent. Now, they're like, well, lo loose-fitting pants. Because you can't have any conformity to your body shape, right? You can't you can't do that because then that's, that's, that's immoral. Because, you know, it's clear you're trying to bring attention or whatever else. Such, like, 1830s and prior kind of bullshit. God forbid you see an E. I mean, whew. I mean, you're really trying to tempt us men, you know? If, if you show an ankle or a knee, I mean, God, I mean, we may not be able to help ourselves. This is, this is the way that they operate. It's the most absurd shit. The point is, that's one of the things they changed. Again, this is their attempt to grasp desperately for relevancy and stop hemorrhaging so many members. Uh, the, the beard thing. And uh, then the, the shunning alteration. Once they lost Norway, they're like, okay, uh, panic. Let's desperately try to loosen our shunning thing by claiming still trying to claim it's not shunning even though it is and say well now you can't tell us we're truly completely isolating and shunning people if 
We just fellowship them because we're inviting them to book studies and then maybe meetings and maybe we say hi to them now. So, so, so to be fair, that's a friendly interaction and, and therefore you can't say we don't care and therefore we're not really isolating, shunning them. So you can't say that. Well, you still can. <laughs> it's still by definition a form of that. In fact, it's actually more manipulative than not to do that. Now you're being manipulative. Whereas before, you could argue manipulation, but it's not really manipulation. This is, I guess it's indirect manipulation. This is direct manipulation. You're like, okay, well, you know, because you want to encourage them to realize their, their bad choices and their worldly influence from Satan as demons, you know, and, and, and repent for their, for their, their, their loss of spiritual faith and integrity and and repent so direly to to please please let us come back we've made such a grave error just in a slightly altered way where now it's more, a little more hands-on look what you're missing you're missing out on people being able to say more than just hi look how friendly they are they care so much for you please come back you you poor poisoned minded person more changes now this is from jw updates this is really interesting because there's two of these by the way uh they're like put into parts or segments so this is stuff directly leaked from bethelite elders <laughs> who are pimo again physically in mentally out who are leaking they're the leakers who leak this kind of private meetings uh, private agendas, private plans, and things like this of the governing body. Directly leaked from them, they have a 10-year plan where they're going to alter so many different things. It just sounds like they're trying to go underground as if, like, nuclear war is broken out. And, you know, it's back to Nazi Germany again, and they're going to freaking be taken out. So they're like, oh, God, gotta go underground. Gotta become mole people again. <laughs> gotta go to our bunkers and only communicate via ham radios. <laughs> <laughs> we have smoke signal. <laughs> Hi guys, this is a follow-up video to the uh, uh, 10 year plan video I did uh, over three weeks when a whistleblower from the world headquarters has now given us information about all the changes in the Woodstar and the things he told us over three weeks ago, of even more time before that. Uh, they have come true because Mark Sanderson came out on Monday and relaxed relaxed all the different uh, parts of this fellowshipping uh, in the uh, Shepherding the Flock book. And all these changes that he announced, they will now trickle down towards our articles. And they have become an announcement for all the elders. So this same whistleblower, now he's given us a more detailed account about the future of the ministry and oversight and i will make another video to cover the other parts of uh, the changes that will happen within within the next 10 years it, and this possible anything can happen they can happen tomorrow but it was meant to be originally a 10-year plan so uh he says whether the governing body does decide to apply this exhaustive agenda to rebrand the organization based upon my inside sources i don't know all i can confirm is that this organization is not run by holy spirit and it is a corporate real estate business yep. we know that already we don't need inside information for that why can i say this because in none of these instances are there any changes coming regarding construction of kingdom halls and other projects the what's our this the what's our these things will always be and will always last forever. In other words, the real estate business part of the organization will run exactly the same way it runs today. It will run also in the future and the next 10 years because the way they flip properties around the world, it makes the money. And of course, if it makes you money, it's a lot easier to keep something. What do they say? If it's not broken, <laughs> don't touch it. So this part is working, but all the other parts do not work and they need changing. One thing I find interesting is, uh, yeah, the idea of like how rapidly they've been rebranding and rechanging. Also, yeah, that's a key word, rebranding, because it's very corporatized. They run very corporate. So, yeah, as a result, 
that's a perfect term. I mean, again, they hired a corporate consultant to literally help them review everything about their religion, their doctrine, and how they operate, literally just so that they can rebrand and alter their doctrine to become more relevant. That's You only do that if you know you're intentionally operating as a corporation. Also, like you said, over five years have changed so much. I remember even 10 years ago how different they were. I remember 15 years ago and how different they were. And different between each of these five, four or five year segments. They've been so different. And it's super funny because I remember growing up, my mom was always calling this out near the end of her tenure, really associating with anything J-Dub. Uh, she was pointing out, of course, my dad was rejecting it because he's a good little obedient J-Dub, you know. And uh, she was obviously getting even beyond just Pimo. She was actually really just drifting further and further away, which is a positive. That's always a good thing. But uh, she was pointing out, like, no, I already can see it. I guarantee within the next five to ten years, they're going to start doing a lot of stuff that the Mormons have been doing for a long time. The LDS, Latter-day Saints. They're going to implement TVs and all the Kingdom Halls. They're going to start doing They're going to launch their own website. They're going to have a bunch of, uh, they're going to start doing their own productions and they're probably posting on the website. Um, they're going to do basically televangelism. They're going to do a lot of this other stuff that the Mormons have already done. I can't remember all the different things, but those are basically that they're going to very hyper digital digitize everything as well. And not even five years in, and it apparently that's what pretty much universally happened across the board, at least here in the United States is they did exactly that, which became incredibly Mormonistic because the Mormons had already been ahead of the curve over most of the religions in that regard. And then, so they were the ones that were known for it. And plus, Mormons, as much as J-Dubs hate, hate it with a passion, when you suggest that they are similar to LDS, to Mormons, they really are. They're both very similar in a lot of ways. Uh, that... <laughs> they basically just copied the Mormon blueprint in that department, which I find to be very amusing. Um, so yeah, that was like 2007, eight area. And then, yeah, by like 2012, 13, it was pretty much universal, at least here in the United States, that all kingdom halls were hyper digitalized by that point. Uh, they had their app launched. They had the website go full universal. And then they were promoting nothing but, JW.org, JW.org, JW.org. If you know a Jehovah's Witnesses, you, they have a social media account, especially if it's Instagram or something like that, or Twitter. If you go to their Instagram or their Twitter profile, you already know what you're going to see. Usually, there's nothing there except for JW.org. <laughs> it's like, how well indoctrinated do you have to fucking be <laughs> to like just be like, at the moment they're like, you, you should put this in your... Don't even let them finish the sentence. You already know they put it in there. It's like... Oh my god. <laughs> Somebody shoot me. Uh, so, of course, in my Instagram profile, I mockingly put jw.cult. <laughs> uh, that needs to be a real website. There's, uh, somebody needs to create that extension. They really do. It's just so I can I can create that website even as it's just a single gag page on the landing page and that's it. But uh yeah. Anyway, point being, yeah, they they've changed a lot. Like every four to five years, they've already shifted so much. And now doctrine wise, they're shifting harder and harder and harder. I remember um still in like early two thousand tens, the universal thing was still calling it the hundred and forty four thousand. Right? And the anointed ones. Well, by like 20, apparently somewhere between 2015 and 2018, in that period, they universally reverted back to calling it the unnumbered ones and the little flock, which was like their original term when they became a religion for, the, for that group, because it was unnumbered. It was unknown what the number was. And then it was a little flock, Jehovah's little flock. That's what they called them. And by the time, you know, sometime before I was born, apparently, they became, and I'm 30, so 94, mid 90s. Uh, they became the, instead of the little flock and a number of ones, it was the 144,000, was the nom dominant thing they always referred to them as. And then occasionally the anointed ones. Usually it was more in formal and informal conversation with just other people. They call it the anointed ones. 
Uh, otherwise, in meetings, they always consistently made sure to call them the 144,000. And so when I first heard that shift, and then I was told that they had done that a few years prior, I laughed my ass off. And I said, that's fucking hilarious. Because of fucking course you would revert back to calling it the unnumbered ones. You know how fucking convenient that is for you? Because you kept demanding that it was exactly 144,000 anointed ones. <laughs> and... The problem was, is you kept getting too many anointed ones, and then suddenly when you realize that, they panic, and then all of a sudden that number would decline, and it would go way too low, and then they'd rapidly start building up again, and then they accidentally cross that threshold again, there was more than 144,000 144, of them, and then they had to keep going up and down like a freaking cat with leukemia, and just like, and it really started to catch people's attention and, and started to make even more people that were in actually start to question and eventually leave because they're like, this doesn't work. This doesn't add up. Like what's, what is your defense and excuse for this? And of course they had none. So no shit. You're going to rebrand that back to the original unnumbered ones. Cause then you don't have to track any numbers of anointed people. It doesn't matter what the size or how many there are. Because, well, yeah, how easy does that make it for you? Now you never have to defend yourself. So doing that was hilarious to me to see. And then, yeah, in person was the very first time I actually saw the changes from prior to that when they switched to having a very hyper-digitized interior and use of, like, the Bible and Watchtower and everything in, in the... Uh, on their phones instead so like almost everybody's using tablets or phones in the kingdom hall for a memorial service for my uncle and i'm just sitting here like looking at everybody i'm like are you serious like <laughs> really wow this just feels so mormon <laughs> mom was right tvs everywhere and i mean pretty much everywhere they had a big st like a 40 inch tv pinned up on the back for like where the audio booth is that nobody was in because that's pretty much automated now they have a, another one near the entrance i think they now have i think they had them in this kingdom hall it's a really small hall but i'm pretty sure i remembered them having it in the bathroom they had a small tv in there so you guess you don't miss anything and then of course they had tvs in the fucking a and b school they had tvs in uh in the main hall, two of them up front. Oh my God. He gave us information about the next 10 years plan. And the first one is about ministry, which will be interesting for many people who are active Jehovah's Witnesses. So he says the necessity for territory servants will be gone and maps for door to door ministry will end within the next few years. In oh, other words, this diligent way that they used to go about marking every door that they had knocked on and people listen to them or people who don't who are not interested or people who are apostles and they don't want to speak to them it was all recorded it was very mm -hmm. diligent thorough that will go of course because they want to downgrade the ministry as it is because it is one of the most important parts of the jehovah's witnesses psyche that has to go for them to become a main, mainstream religion oh yeah another it, thing i noticed they keep using the term christian now like, not only do they have they clearly just, like, at least from my experience, they've wildly ramped up the use of repent and repentance and repents and all the other tenses of repent. Which is wild to me because that seems so Catholic to me. That's so Catholic to me. They're, they're obsessed with repentance. And so, it, like, it, it was so weird when I first realized hearing these, like, these elders from the governing body using repent, repents, repentance, all this other, constantly repent, repent, repent. I'm like, that and like a hellfire Baptist and stuff, just like the, the more fundamentalist Catholics, they are, they never stop using repent. And they had the fucking branded t-shirts that literally are repent. And it's just like, <laughs> I want to get a cat and growl and hiss at it. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? They're using that so much now. And I remember when I was growing up, like, I don't know if I remember them using that term once. 
if they did, it was very seldom. And it was probably only while they were reading the Bible scriptures straight from the Bible. So verbatim, like they, they seem to actively avoid it, which does make sense. Cause again, any terms that are like heavily used by other groups of Christians, especially they always, if you haven't noticed, actively avoid. And they even try to rebrand or change the words and the wording and the phrasing so that that way it fits their doctrine better and the, the perception they want to create for themselves better than just general Christianity because they're so different. That's why they you know, refuse to call themselves churches. They refuse to call it uh, anything but meetings instead of going to a church or whatever, or going to a service or whatever. And now service is his own thing, which is the ministry or whatever else. And it's like, now they're using it obsessively. And then, yeah, the Christian thing. It's so funny to me because, yes, they claim to be Christians. And who it depends on your subjective opinion of what defines Christian, if you're a Christian or not. That's a war that's been waged for the last five eternities, if you haven't noticed, and it will never go away. But, as petty as it is, actually, but either way, they didn't really, they weren't referring to themselves as much in the third person like this. And not even their members like that. Like, oh, you know, Christian, Christian, Christian. They would always use their own religion term because they're talking about themselves, their religion, or in this case, their members are Jehovah's Witnesses. And they'd always say Jehovah's Witnesses. I mean, do you remember when they were would just like seethe and come unglued if you dared refer to them as J-dubs or J-Ws? They hated it because they thought it was such an apostate and, and, and uh, you know, uh, worldly term for, for them in a derogatory fashion. That was for pretty much my entire time. I, in fact, I think it was the entire time I was in there. That was the case until at some point the government body was like, let's create JW.org. See, it was a marketing opportunity. They realized, well, everyone outside keeps calling us J-dubs, so J JWs. It is shorthand. It makes for a perfect uh, URL because it's just two letters. There's the corporate mindedness, right? They're they're trying to market themselves and so as a, and sell themselves to you into the world. And so, of course, they're going to suddenly have a hard 180 flip and say, actually, we have never had any problem with J-Dub. We've always been Jehovah's Witnesses. We've always been, we've always been J-Ws. And what makes a good J-Dub? And, and now they're like Christian. They don't, they don't say, they're almost never saying or calling themselves or the members Jehovah's Witnesses anymore now or Witnesses. Now they're constantly calling themselves Christian. That seems like it's a very recent development where the governing body is constantly saying Christian, Christian, Christians, Christian, Christians, Christians, when referring to themselves. Which, don't you feel like that's kind of a little weird? Which, now that I think about it, would lend a hand to suggest that this whole 10-year plan thing that you'll hear about eventually, whether in this one or the next one, I don't know, where they are quite literally going to rebrand and no longer be called witnesses or Jehovah's Witnesses. They're going to call themselves something else. And in this case, these leakers, they don't, still don't know what that is, which is kind of typical corporate stuff too, right? You have your little private panel behind the closed doors, behind the man behind the curtain, right? In this case, the men behind the curtain. And they're going to do their corporate board meeting strategy of like, okay, now what's the right branding here? If we're not going to call ourselves this anymore, what are we going to call ourselves? That would lend the hand perfectly to that and suggest that might be why they're calling themselves that. Because that's very ambiguous. Like, it's very general. It's like, okay. It's like they're psychologically thinking, okay, let's remove the term we've always referred to ourselves as. Slowly. And just instead do a very ambiguous general term. Christian. And let's keep using that. You know, the basic human psychology, repetition, especially with emphasis, the more you do that, the more people you'll convince and the more people will naturally follow you. It'll become natural to them and so consistent that they don't think or hear anything else. Now they might start calling themselves that. And guess what? That's so open now that it'll be no problem to rebrand to a new name. That lends perfectly to that as the part of their plan, suggesting that it very likely is the case. But it's such a recent thing where it's just like they're constantly calling themselves Christians and Christian and not witnesses or Jehovah's Witnesses. 
which is so bizarre to me. But that would make it make perfect sense if that is why that, or that, that would explain why they're doing it. So I would suggest to you that that keep that in mind that that's likely why they're doing this now It's because they're trying to debrand and slowly basically uproot the branding to not just the general world, but especially to the people in that, Hey, it's okay. Uh, just, you know, without saying it directly, basically like we're going to start calling ourselves Christians. Now we're not going to, we're not going to say witnesses because they're trying to uproot that long standing, like hundred year old name and branding and trying to get people to gently nudge it out of their mind. So that once it seems like the majority of their members have done that, they can now introduce that new branding and it won't be as shocking or like as difficult for them to mentally be in the right place to now refer to themselves as that. And then we'll gently do the same thing just in reverse to get them to now be programmed to call themselves whatever that new brand is. But it's just such a weird feeling because of how long standing this has been and to shift that so hard. In this case, this is actually rather sudden, at least in my experience, it's this Christian thing. It's really, it's a little off putting because it feels so strange because it's like, okay, you know, in other words, you know, something's up. Your instincts, your intuition is telling you something's up. Something is rotten here. Something smells and it reeks of they're up to something. The main issue with this whole thing is that not that. Again, this is very congregation to congregation, elders to elders, church to church. It, 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 or, but you know, kingdom hall to kingdom hall, it territory to territory. It heavily depended on who was what, doing what and who was at what position and whatever, who was doing the, the service, going to service in this case, ministry is what they're calling it, service. You know, if they actually obeyed and respected the do not calls. Which, of course, let's face it, the majority of people were immediately jumping to say, put me on your do not call list. I do not want you knocking at my door again. I do not want you calling me. Do not contact me. I do not want to hear this. I do not hear or I don't want to buy anything that you're selling. In this case, they are technically selling something. A doctrine. That's, you know, again, it's never a guarantee that they even respect that whole do not call list that exists. Let alone, therefore, if it was on the maps and i remember they had and at least in the, the congregations that i've been into in the back rooms they had a full giant paper map hyper detailed pinned up on like a cork board on the wall and it was literally demarcated with like little annotations of like what places when who they were and then like what were do not calls what were again, apostates or whatever the fuck else, that's how they did that, which was, I think, really smart and really cool. So anybody, before they go into service, they always are in that room. They go and refer to that map, knowing what part of the territory that they're going to go into to do service, and then, you know, door to door, and then same thing, door knocking. Um, but that's that's why I don't like this, because that's bad, especially if they're going to continue to do service, so ministry. It's bad because you you need that information. And this shows that they do not want to respect that anymore. They do not care. All they care about is push, 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 proselytize as much as possible. Keep getting in people's faces. Enforce your passionate belief in Jehuber Gorb and shove it down their throat, you know? And I know what it was like to be one of those congregations that were super detailed like that, but they did not give a fuck about do not calls. They completely ignored them or they looked at them and then they'd laugh and say, let's go call on that house anyway. And it's like, what are the worst they going to do? Slam the door in the face if they open and if they don't, what? Just not answer? Cool. We'll just force our fucking pamphlets and our watchtowers and awakes in the door jam anyway. And who cares? We done, we done good by Jehovah God. You know, and it's like... And that's, that's one of the things, one of the countless things that like, as a kid growing up, I was so uncomfortable with and I hated, and I was like, I do not respect this group, but I do not like it. This is so wrong on so many levels. And I understood that as a kid, like this is fucking bullshit. And so being able to leave, I would have left earlier if I didn't 
fear my dad retaliating or something. Um, but you know, when I did leave, I was super relieved because it was a huge weight off my shoulders. And I just was like, yeah, this, this is amazing. It feels freeing because I don't believe any of this shit. And I still think back to that time when that was the case. And I'm like, I, I hate these people. Like what kind of disrespectful, uncaring assholes do this kind of shit? You know, like, really? And you think that this is going to help people believe what you, you know, more and you're and listen to you more? Like, really? That's mighty arrogant and very ignorant of you. Uh, and of course, this is not happening because they are reminiscent of the past. They only do it because they want to downgrade the ministry. So uh, this, this uh, uh, word that keeps popping up, conscience, it's a consci conscious matter. It's a conscious matter. Yes, because they don't want to have any responsibility. And that's yep. why everything is a conscious matter. Yep. Additionally, informal witnessing at the workplace or other places will be strongly encouraged, obviously, as an easy alternative, right? You can't go anywhere. If you're at work, you can't go anywhere. You can't avoid the proselytizing that they're going to do, the preaching work that they're going to do. You can't avoid it. And plus, now that I think about it, I bet you they think that they're doing a huge, uh, big-brained move here legally because if you're in a workplace and you're working with somebody who is a witness and they're proselytizing to you and you can't get away from them what is your next best step what can you do to try to stop it from happening well you can complain to hr or your boss or higher ups or even a founder or owner of a small business cool you can launch a complaint against them and be like you need to make this stop i've told them multiple times respect my choice and my and the fact i want space and i do not need you interrupting my work I do not want you proselytizing to me and preaching to me about your belief because I do not care. Leave me alone. And they won't stop because I, I can't leave. Just up and leave. I can't get away from it because I work here. So you got to do something about this. Okay, cool. The problem is if that business, especially if it's a small business, actually, if that business dares reprimand or potentially fire that employee, they can come back with a lawsuit and so can the governing body themselves or Bethel and they can come back and say, well, that's religious discrimination. You can't do that. And I think that's why they think it's probably a big, big brain move to do that. That's basically another what they're doing is they're entrapping you. They're using entrapment, knowing you can't avoid this, which, like he said, makes it super lazy and wildly easy because now you have your prey trapped in a fucking corner they can't get away from your predation in this case of forcing your fucking religion and your faith down their throat you can't do anything about it because if you did and you got them in trouble they fired especially again if it's a small business that could take the whole fucking business down in fact because and it could ruin their reputation wrongfully because religious discrimination which is a huge quandary and problem. It puts you in an impossible position. And same with the employer, actually. It puts them in an impossible position, again, especially if they're small business, because what the fuck are they supposed to do? You might even be a better worker, more experienced, and have more respect with your peers than the, that other person does, but they can't technically reprimand them, or especially not fire them, because, God forbid, if they did, they might get sued into the fucking ground. And you, too. You, as an employee, might get fucked over. Because they get offended and they're like, well, that's technically by law discrimination. And it probably is. And so then what are you supposed to do? You're in such an impossible position. No matter what, you're just wrong and you're screwed. And they likely know that. So it, it's not just, oh, it's just because it's lazy and easy. It's because you are literally stuck in a trapped there with them preaching to you. And you can't do anything about it. That's the worst part. That's how, that's the truth of this is that's how fucked up this is. That's by definition, a form of abuse. In fact, actually it's, it's entrapment by, by legal definition too. It's like, you can't, this is, there's nothing okay about that. But at the same time, there's nothing okay, apparently legally that you can do about it either. You're just screwed. And like, if that, at that, that point, that would force you as an employee to have to yourself quit. You'd have to literally quit or do something in order to force them to fire you so that you can't get sued for discrimination. But then there's no guarantee you can get a job. Uh, certainly not in a position where maybe you were actually really well respected and appreciated. Like, 
or enough money to be able to keep a roof over your head. There's so many problems with that. But that's like, to avoid legal issues for both the company and yourself, that's also about the only thing they could you could do to get away from it, which is even worse. If you're in a store or a coffee shop or something, you, people can get away. They can go elsewhere, and then technically that person, if they keep doing it, it's at least harassment. Arguably, you could call it stalking, but that's a little bit of a stretch. Definitely a court would uphold harassment. Except, again, you have the other aspect of discrimination or religious grounds. It's a clusterfuck. And then, but you can still get away is the point. You can leave the store, come back later. Hopefully that person didn't follow you or see what car you drove and your license plate or something, because God forbid they're going to be that determined, you know, come back later and then they shouldn't be there anymore. And then you'll probably be able to actually do your shopping in peace or whatever, or get your coffee in peace or whatever it is you're doing. But like on something like public transit, you may be fucked. You may also be trapped on that train or that bus that tram, whatever the fuck it is that you're on, that plane. Oh God, planes. Oh no. I <laughs> think about that. Imagine being stuck for a three, four, five, 14 hour flight with a proselytizing J dub, knowing you have absolutely nowhere you can go. And if they force a landing because enough people complain and they have you removed from the plane, and maybe they charge you for that because that's a lot of fucking money and it and there's a lot of people in the other destination that are relying on that plane showing up so they can fly back to wherever the heck that plane's going to take them. Like, you, you, they still potentially could sue the airline and the people for defamation and religious, via religious discrimination, basically. <sighs> but yeah, like, if you're stuck on transit with them, yeah, you could get off, but if you if you need to get somewhere by a specific time, and this is the only bus or tram or whatever that is you're on, to be able to get there on time, let's say it's a job interview that you absolutely need to get to, or you absolutely have to get to this job that you work at or something in order to keep the roof over your head and not get fired, you're screwed. You're just, you're forced to suffer through it. And that's a problem. Even worse, if they see what business you go into. God forbid they get off at the same stop, whether because they choose to, because they keep wanting to proselytize, or because they just happen to be getting off there. God forbid they're actually going into the same or one of the nearby businesses, because then they can see where you work. And then they're undoubtedly probably gonna show up there too, because now they know you're once again fucked. You're still entrapped. Because now you can't just leave your place of employment you're kind of forced to do that. And then again, you're back to square one with the religious discrimination thing if the business decides to kick that person out or something. It... Do you see how fucking bad that is? Like, it's not just lazy and easy. It's because they know they're entrapping you. You can't do jack shit about it. That's really fucked up. So the same whistleblower now has given us more information about the changes that will happen uh, for the meetings, the assemblies, and conventions. And here's what he has to say about the plan of the World Star for the next 10 years. And he says, over the next 10 years, the conventions will include two new episodes of the good news according to Jesus. And if you don't know what that is, it's this story of Jesus Christ that they are, is being filmed right now. Right. Don't know if he has finished in Australia. After which, in 2034, there will be a feature-length film based on the entire Book of Acts. And uh, having seen the Book of Acts in the past being done, it's a great book to film because there are so many events there. So obviously Look they're trying the to copy others who have already done the Book of Acts. Yeah. After that feature-length film, the Jehovah's Witnesses will have hope to have become closer to first century Christianity, even though they make this claim already. Uh, I find that funny because again, that's further again towards what I mentioned that they have their own studio now. Um, but that just proves the televangelism thing. They're getting more and more, not just Mormonistic in that sense, but they're also getting very, very, uh, televangelistic because they're getting very, uh, evangelical in the sense of like, they just are constantly evangelizing to you. Yeah, it takes a lot of fucking arrogance and self-righteousness. I'm just going to say that right now to do that.
You got a very, uh, oh, what's his face again? Kenneth Copeland thing going on there. Just uh, thought I could remind you of somebody I know that JWs also hate, just like most people do. Even though I guarantee the governing body loves that dude. They're probably taking cues from him, actually. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. After 2034, there is supposedly be no more conventions. That's very interesting. So apparently in 10 years time, there won't be any more conventions or assemblies planned and congregations will be remarketed for local meetings redesigned in a similar way as the original Bible students group. I love the terms that these guys are using. Because again, these are elders in Bethel that are physically in, but mentally out. They're Pimo. That says a lot, man. I mean, when you're that high up, the only step left is governing body. So that's so funny to me that they keep using the corporate terminology, which again, is just something that proves the point that they really are very corporatized at this point. Uh, using marketed, remarketed, marketing, branding rebranding rebranded all these different things is hilariously accurate and on point and of course being an oregonian especially from the portland area i always think of the woodburn assembly hall it not being used is really interesting to me because like that's a pretty big capacity place it, it's it feels a little tar to see actually because you're on the outside it really doesn't seem that big but then you go into it and specifically onto the, what would be the north side of it, which is where the actual hall is, where all the seating is on stage and everything. And you realize how much bigger it is inside, <laughs> how much more capacity there is than it seems on the outside. It does, doesn't seem like it should possibly hold that many once you're into there. So it's just really weird to think about that because it's also a pretty exclusive property, obviously, for, for only that reason. Um, but then, again, you have to remember that this is a real estate investment acquisition sales and marketing firm at this point <laughs> so this gives them the ability to get away with just selling off all their assembly halls that's so interesting that's so interesting yeah. let me read that again that, that if that happens this is an, an extremely big change after mm. that sorry after 2034 they supposedly be no more conventions or assemblies planned. So that's gone. Obviously, they don't make enough money from those. And they can't maintain yep. these big buildings. And of course, there's also a certain uh, terror <laughs> that is related, especially here in Europe. Things go up, if you know what I mean, in these big buildings. So, um, and local uh, congregations will be remarketed for local meetings redesigned in a similar way as the original Bible students group. So does that mean that meetings will have far less people in a way that you sit around and you discuss the what's that or the book? A far more uh, ground for apostasy. Oh, you know, yeah. Because the Bible student groups were famous where all the weird ideas used to circulate because mm -hmm. you had more freedom, right? It was all about okay. questioning. So the name Jehovah's Witness will no longer be designated beyond 2034. Of course, it's 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 a toxic brand. It has yep. to go. However, I'm not aware of what the new name will be. I know what it is. It's JW.org. Nothing else. JW.org. What are you? And we're just followers of a website. Uh, a blog. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty much what it is. It's a blog site. But yeah, the Bible students thing, remember what I said earlier, because it's very true. The the whole International Bible Students Group, that was before it became hijacked by Rutherford from Russell when he died and made into a, a religion, a cult, um, to make him a lot of money <clears throat> and give him a lot of control. It was all about debate. And all about encouraging people from different faiths, backgrounds, ideologies beliefs, interpretations and perceptions and understandings of the scriptures of the Bible and of other religions. Uh, that's what that group was. Which means that, yeah, when he says 
uh, opens it up wide open to apostasy, you bet your ass it does. Because that's what apostasy is, basically, is complete free thought and autonomy. Questioning the doctrine, questioning interpretations and beliefs about the scriptures and all this other stuff. That's what it was. So if you're going to, if you're going to do that, then it almost is more like, what's the point of kingdom halls? Because then at that point, I'd almost argue they're too small. It's just kind of weird. Like I don't, in fact, that's not going to help them gain or not lose any more members. That would help them lose more members. <laughs> Actually, they would hemorrhage way worse than they do now. And in fact, that would be so all such an opposite of what they are now and have always been that could they even consider themselves a religion at that point? Because I would argue you can't because if you're just a study group, well, then you're really a debate forum now and you can't call yourself a religion because your doctrine is now constantly under question, including by your members. It's just going to fall apart. <laughs> Everything's going to fall away. People are going to leave because they're no longer interested or whatever, or they realize that they've been lied to. Like, I don't see how this makes any sense for them. It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, and then, yeah, the rebranding, who the hell knows? I hope it's not something, and I doubt it will be, but I hope it's not something like the truth because that they love calling themselves the truth. Again, proves the ego, the egotism that they have as a group of people, let alone as a cult. But it's just crazy to me. It's just, I mean, I, it, this, there's so much that I could just keep talking about and ranting on and covering about J-dubs and the whole cult and governing body and the lawsuits and everything else. There is actually very accessible information and videos from these court cases, including plenty that is unedited. Uh, you can actually watch for yourself. The Australian Royal Commission, I believe, has a total of 36, just over 36 hours straight of worth of content, of, of, of operating, basically. So if you want to watch that, that's on YouTube. I don't know where it is. I haven't looked it up. I'm not going to spend the time on that. <laughs> Hell no. But uh, you can if you want to. So you can look that up. Same with the Norway one. Um, and there's, of course, tons of people who've been covering and watching the whole Norwegian uh, situation lawsuit against the uh, J-dubs. And so you can easily find stuff covering that as well. And uh, of course, again, like I said, uh, Lloyd Evans, jwwatch.org, therefore, which is kind of his group watchdogging them, is like the perfect go-to resource to be able, especially on YouTube for videos, to be able to catch up on all this stuff with a good quality, simplified overviews of the changes that they've been making, that they will make, uh, talking with current Pimo elders, and then eventually some of them, of course, left. Some more are going to leave here in the future. He gives interviews with them. He does interviews with other people who have experienced being one of the children in the CSA stuff with J-dubs and dealing with that whole BS. Um, he, he's interviewed like everybody from every possible position you could just about think of when it comes down to the organization that calls themselves a religion that is Jehovah's Witnesses, AKA really a cult um, that I highly recommend you go check out. One of those actually is a really good one. He did an interview with him before he officially left. It was a little over an hour and it was phenomenal. Uh, and it was covering in detail with the actual form itself that the elders have always had that secret to where even a lot of elders had no idea it existed, which says a lot for the CSA, the child sex abuse form. Uh, they, and it just breaks the whole damn thing down with him because he was an elder at the time. So this is the guy right here, Chaka Yumba. Chaka Yumba is the guy. So this is it right here. Uh, child sex abuse form. This is the one you need to look at, the CSA form. Everybody needs to watch this. <laughs> Very little changed. At least two of those forms, possibly three. Uh, it's just so wildly 
revealing of everything you'll ever need to know and it will absolutely be probably pretty gut-wrenching to actually listen to and read the form with them it's terrible especially knowing how secret it is to where even leading elders a lot of times have no idea this form exists which was expressed in this it's disgusting it's crazy and of course it proves how easy it is to prove that they downplay the csa on top of actually pretending or sorry actually protecting themselves and the accused person the adult who did the csa it's made for that specifically uh so this is chuma the jo jehovah's witness elder whose involvement in a judicial committee on child sex abuse csa granted him rare access to the secret form used by the uk branch to bypass the authorities in reporting crime Again, please watch it. it. It's so necessary. And again, go to Lloyd Evans. Subscribe, follow his channel, because you're not going to want to miss a lot of the stuff. He's, in my opinion, the best by far of all of them. And addressing things, keeping them simplified, overviewing, giving commentary. He's really good about this. That's going to be it for me in this video. Um, maybe in the future, I <laughs> Make <laughs> more videos addressing some other changes or other BS like that. Uh, but uh, I've been going on and recording this for an hour and 48 minutes now. So, and again, I could go on forever. I really don't want to at the moment. So, <laughs> I'm going to shut my mouth. <laughs> and hopefully you guys will go ahead over and check this stuff out your shelf. Uh, otherwise, hope you stay safe out there and... Try to help each other out with, you know, helping people get out, or better yet, <laughs> even um, just actively avoiding it and helping other people realize it's a mistake to do it to them as well. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you in whatever the hell my next video will be.